we're going to talk about how we can transform our faith. So before we dive in, uh, I'd love to just pray together with you that, uh, that we can have an impact today, okay? Uh, Holy Spirit, uh, Father, and, and Jesus, we are so grateful to be here with you today. We ask that you would bless these students' lives and that your word would hit just as hard as it, as it has long, long in history, 2,000 years ago. We ask that it would make an impact and that it, it would be felt in the lives of these students today. Amen. Amen. Awesome. So in honor of the Catalyst, the Catalyst series, we're actually going to demonstrate a chemical reaction. Yeah, yeah boy. Okay. okay. original Mentos and Coke. Did you guys, how many have seen a video of Mentos and Coke or have heard about it? Hey. Okay, okay, so pretty much everybody, so like 90% of people. Can I stand up? Oh yeah, yeah, come, come just a little bit closer as long as you can get back to your seats there and try not to get drenched, your parents will be so upset. Okay. So the original, the original Mentos and Coke did Diet Pepsi. It smells tasty. Oh, huh? that's, that, that's that sugar and false sugar right there. So um, in the original, they actually did Diet Coke and Diet Pepsi. And you can see the old school, like the, the front of the page there. It's, it's like really old. So nobody, to my knowledge, has actually done it with these brand new kinds. So we're going to see what happens today. How many think that the Coke is going to go the highest? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Diet and Pepsi? Goals and goals makes the diet Pepsi is going to go big. What about Diet Coke? Yes, yes, Diet Coke. Diet Coke, Diet Coke. It's totally in front of me. Here's our the real deal Pepsi. Straight up Pepsi. Okay, okay. Okay, now, now forgive me, this is not actually something that I do every day, so I don't know exactly the perfect way to do it, but, but we're going to put a lot of Mentos inside this Coke and see what happens. Take a step back. Okay, it's Hey, guys, everybody take one step back. I don't even know if I got one of them in it. Again, it doesn't work again. That works so um, So that's awesome. I'm very sticky. So, um, so do you know what's happening there? It's actually a chemical reaction. Okay, we're, we're going to do these other ones, but that's a chemical reaction. And what's happening is that the bubbles, do you know the chemical term for bubbles? Effervescence. Okay, there's a $50 word if you ever need to impress anyone, um, say that. But, but what's happening is these bubbles are reacting with water and they're reacting with acid. Okay, and the acid makes a ton of bubbles. That's what makes the geyser, right? But the reason that it goes so fast versus when you just kind of drop a coat is because of the chalk on these babies, right? The Mentos. So the Mentos are the catalyst. Okay. So. Um, we're gonna go with uh, Diet Pepsi here. Like a nuclear bomb now. Come on! Go! Oh! 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 That's the highest. Oh, that's the highest. That is the highest. Hey, keep track for us, okay, Luke? Okay. Diet Pepsi is so cool. Do not do this in your kitchen. Oh. <laughs> Just do it in your brother's kitchen. Okay. <laughs> or your brother's room. I can't believe it. Let me do this. Backyard. Backyard. I know. You know what I'm saying? I thought the secret, <laughs> thought the secret store that was we have to drink all that. It's a drink. Okay. So, we're going to go with Diet Coke now. What's this? Diet So yeah, what did they do to the original Coke? That's the real Look question. You added this It's not the original recipe. It's just ridiculous. You added this It's not diet. You guys ready for this one? Three! Three! Two! One! Oh, that's the highest. Oh, that's the highest. Okay, that's the highest. Okay, okay. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Let's see 
Hey, in the zoo! No, guys, guys, let's not step over here. Let's not. Literally, what was the point of that? Yay. Now we're gonna mop more. Yeah, for like three weeks to be like. Um, yeah, let me. Oh, right here, right here. Guys, right there. Okay, okay, I'm a country boy, you know, so I'm a little bit of like a hillbilly, you know? 
I grew up around the farms and I grew up around where people go deer hunting and stuff like that. So this is a, a story about a, a farmer from a place just like that. So the farmer, you know, the farmer has a wife, he just gets married, they love each other, you know, and they're, they're getting in their old truck. And have you guys ever seen the old trucks where they don't have two seats in the front, they just got one big seat? It's like, they didn't even know to use seat belts back in the day, you know, like it's crazy. So he would sit down in, in that truck and she would kind of get really close to him because they, they really enjoyed each other, they loved each other. So they're, they're holding on to each other, you know, smiling. And they'd go on a date every other week, you know, they'd go on a date to the movies. And so it was really nice, you know, and they, and they loved each other. They're right next to each other in the seat. A couple years later, they're going out to dinner and you know, she's still there, you know, she's holding hands, you know, maybe she's kind of sitting in the middle, right? A couple years later, they're doing the same thing. They're going out for a nice dinner at Applebee's, right? But she's she's kind of more like in the seat where she would be if there were two seats. And, you know, three years later, what it looked like? They're driving in that same truck, and he's kind of just driving like he always does, a little bit stoic, and She's leaning almost out the window, and she's just thinking, man, this guy doesn't even like me. You know, he's not even close to me. What? And, he, and she lets him have it, right? She tells him. She's like, listen, Robert, you don't, do you even love me anymore? I'm all the way over here. You know, we're not, you know, we're not smiling at each other. Do we even have a relationship anymore? And you know what Robert said? I haven't moved. Robert was right there the whole time. Robert was driving in the same spot. She's the one that moved away from Robert, right? Man, that's how I feel with, with God sometimes. I can sometimes think, man, God, why, why don't I hear you? Or why aren't you right there with me? But God hasn't left. He's here with us and he's here for us all the time. He wants a relationship with us. It's us that might have done something that takes us further away from God or that we're not communicating with him when he's right there for us. All right, sorry, these are these babies are sticky, okay? Because this was a, this was a fun a fun little demonstration over there. All right. So we can feel like that with our spiritual spiritual progress. God didn't run away. He's right here and he's waiting on us. He's waiting on us to talk to him. That's called prayer. Right? He's waiting on us to spend time with him. Bible study, right? Getting into the Bible. And I'll, I'll share some tips later about how you can do that so that it's a little bit more efficient and so that it's a, a little deeper. And he's waiting for us to take action that he's outlined in that design, in that Bible for us. Things like serving and getting together like this with your family, right? That's amazing. You know, I grew up in a, in a Christian household and um, one, of the, one of the things that um, can make you feel a certain type of way about transformation with Jesus is if it isn't dramatic. You know, because Jesus says, man, it's incredible, you know, when someone is, is living in a, an evil sort of a lifestyle, a sinful sort of a lifestyle, and they have a major transformation, and they are living for the Lord. You can really tell the difference, right? But there's also people, there's also people that their family might have coached them up or, or they might be in the church when they're young like this. And there's a, a major advantage to that as well. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that because that's my experience too, right? My grandparents prayed for me before I was even born. And that's awesome. My parents prayed for me before I was even born. They took me to Sunday school, right? That was a, uh, what they used to call it, right? They took me to church. And even though my story isn't quite as flashy, it's still, a, it's still my story. It's my story with God, and I still have a chance to make a difference. And one of the things that I really benefited from, that I love to tell people about, because it's a big deal for me, is the wisdom that they passed on to me. Because they prayed for me and, and put me in those areas, they allowed me to learn some different principles, and it allowed me to shortcut around a lot of the disasters that could have happened. There are a lot of different sinful behaviors that could have derailed my life to where my finances could have been way off track or my relationships with others could have been off track. But you know what? Because I was able to look at some of those principles because of my parents, it didn't happen that way, and I'm able to help other people to avoid some of those problems too. All right, let's check out how Jesus completely changed the game in terms of access with God the Father. 
Uh, do we have this one, Hebrews 4, 4, 14 through 16? Yes, we do. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to faith we profess. For we did not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. I want to check out an awesome clip. Um, it's actually by an app that you can get on your phone called The Bible Project. And I really recommend that app. It, it really breaks things down. But we're going to play that clip. Let's roll this great clip about Jesus, our high priest. that 
one of their descendants will come to intervene on their behalf and restore the blessings of Eden. A new priest to restore the failed priests. He's going to strike that deceiver while being struck by him. He's like a royal priest who becomes a sacrifice. Now through Israel's story, God raises up many people who could have been this royal priest, like Abraham, Moses, and David. And they all fail, but their stories point forward, anticipating the ultimate royal priest. And this brings us to Jesus. Now, in the time of Jesus, the people of Israel were ruled by the Roman Empire, but they were governed by their own priests, including the high priest who worked in the Jerusalem temple. The high priest was the only one who could enter the most holy space, and it was separated by a thick curtain embroidered with images of charity. And the high priest at this time was a man named Caiaphas. He is the one who currently represents the people before God. But then Jesus came onto the scene. And when we're introduced to Jesus, he's outside of Jerusalem at the Jordan River getting baptized. The skies open up and God says, You are my son, whom I love. With you I'm very pleased. Now, these words blend together three statements from the Hebrew Scriptures that are all about the coming royal priest who will be the king that God promised to raise up from the line of David, and also the beloved son, like Isaac was to Abraham. And he's the suffering royal servant of Isaiah, who dies for the sins of his people. This baptism is like his ordination as a royal priest. Right, and so it's no surprise that afterwards, Jesus starts going around acting like the priest. All right, like forgiving people of their sins, or restoring people who were impure so they could enter the temple. These are the things that the priests who work in the Jerusalem temple were supposed to be doing. But Jesus is doing it outside their authority. And so they start to see him as a threat. And so this leads to a story where Jesus goes up with some friends to a high mountain. And there he's transformed. He starts shining and all of his clothes become pure white. This is like the vision Moses had of the ideal high priest. Yeah, exactly. Jesus is here being revealed as the ultimate. And it's here that Jesus decides that he's going to Jerusalem, even though he knows that he'll get killed. And so later, when Jesus rides into Jerusalem, he challenges the authority of the current priesthood who are running things in the temple. Like when he storms in and disrupts the sale of animal sacrifices. Yeah, this is his way of showing he's the priest in charge. And then later he's asked, who do you think you are? And so Jesus responds by quoting from Psalm 110 in Israel's scriptures. This is the psalm where King David speaks of someone that he calls his Lord, someone greater than him who will rule as a royal priest. Jesus is claiming that he is that priest. This makes the priests in Jerusalem angry. So they have Jesus arrested and they put him on trial before Caiaphas, the high priest, who asks Jesus, are you the anointed one? And what he means is, are you the royal priest? Because right now, that's my job. And Jesus responds once more by quoting Psalm 110, saying, I am, and you are going to see me ruling at God's right hand. But actually, we're about to see Jesus get killed. How is that ruling as a high priest? Well, remember from Israel's scriptures, the pattern of the royal priest who surrenders himself as a sacrifice. Jesus is saying that offering his life for others is the way that he's going to ascend his royal when Jesus died, the curtain in the temple tore into God's own life presence. The blessings of Eden that were once guarded and separate, now they can flow out of the temple to fill all of creation. And when Jesus comes alive from the dead, he appears to his followers and commissions them to go out to the nations. So that they can share the good news that Jesus is the ruling king and priest who's going to restore the blessings of this is why the Apostle Paul called Jesus the new Adam. He's inviting us back into Eden to become like him. So that we can take up our lost calling of being God's royal priests. Yes, and that new royal priesthood that's made up of the followers of Jesus, that's what we're going to explore next. Awesome, awesome guys. Now, that's a uh, yeah, what? Now that's actually, uh, that's in an artistic rendering. In biblical times, people did have noses and eyes, okay? So just just throwing that out there. Uh, yeah.
Yes, and thankfully, uh, well, probably they did not in the Garden of Eden where they were showing that, but uh, but afterwards they, they put those on. So um, so I got to tell you um, that uh, I'm going to jump right back to where I was talking about that I was a little bit skeptical when uh, people started talking about, okay, look, you're going to be able to, to live forever in heaven. So I found this verse that we just talked about very comforting and, and where we saw uh, what Jesus actually did completely breaking the bonds of death. That's, uh, that's huge, and so many people verifying that, thousands of people seeing him dead and then seeing him alive, um, just incredible. So, you know, I certainly don't want to just die or, or die and have, you know, eternal separation from God. That, that uh, is not my game plan. So it's very inspiring for me to hear that account, and you see it over and over again. Jesus doesn't just do this once. Literally, during his, his career, if you want to call it that, he does this multiple times. There's a sick girl, boom, raises her from the dead. His friend Lazarus, he shows up a little bit late, raises him from the dead, raises himself from the dead. And then all these people, these holy people are walking around the city right after uh, the event of his death and his resurrection. So again and again, Jesus conquers death and he doesn't slow down with that. And I think that's amazing. So what can we do with all this? We're gonna go into some practical steps. You might be looking to deepen your relationship with God, and we will talk about some practical ideas and some tactical steps around pursuing Him. You might also need to change your relationship with Jesus for the very first time. In short, uh, this popular Bible verse that, that uh, we summarize will show God's plan to start that relationship. So this is, uh, this is one that you see everywhere, right? It's the most popular Bible verse in, uh, ever. For God so loved the world, this is John 3, 16 through 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. It's that straightforward. So if you uh, wanted to become a follower of Jesus and accept his free gift of eternal life, with him, all you need to do is accept God as your, the Lord of your life and turn away from sin, which is just anything that's the opposite of loving the Lord with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength, and loving your neighbor as yourself. That's kind of really a hard one, right? Uh, that's the one where uh, you have to kind of turn away from selfishness, right? So I'm going to say a quick prayer with you. If we can just put our heads down, I'm just going to say a prayer as if I'm doing that for the first time. And if you, if you want to, you can just do that right now. Lord, we honor you, and, and we thank you so much for your word and everything that you've done for us. Uh, we ask that uh, that we could have a relationship with you and put you at the head of our life to be the Lord manager of our life. And uh, we ask that you would give us uh, the strength and the power uh, to turn away from our selfish desires and, and to live a life that's holy and upright before you, uh, that follows your commands and that walks in the, uh, the life of gratitude and, and the life of adventure that you have for us. You know, if, if you if you prayed there to you know to repent, to receive the Holy Spirit, and, and to accept a new life in Jesus, you ought to tell somebody. Um, any of the adults around here, if you're going to tell them afterward, um, just let them know. We got um, some books that will help you out too, and some other materials. We get you a Bible and so on, and um, we can just start the journey, you know, and, and support you and be your new friends here in the family. So, uh, th you know, thank you for walking through that with me. And, and now maybe if you're already a Christian um, or you already have a relationship with God, it might be great, it might be feeling slow. We're going to talk through what you can do next, right? So once you have a relationship with Jesus, there's a whole new adventure that's ready for you. You can feel secure in eternal life, in unreasonable and completely unconditional love from God every day, and in complete forgiveness, just like I was talking about, right? But in addition to that, you can also take advantage of living a life of gratitude in pursuit of the purpose that God has for your life. And that's where things get complicated and exciting. And it does matter how you live. And the race isn't over just because you joined the family. You know, uh, I to be a serious follower of Jesus, uh, to be a serious Christian, it's a whole lot like being an athlete. How, how many of you are either, you know, part of band or you're an athlete or you have some team that you do something on? Yeah, right? It's a lot of fun. And you probably feel like, I identify as somebody, you know, from band or I 
identify as, you know, somebody from this engineering team or I identify as a soccer player, right? You're an athlete. So if, uh, you know, if, if you feel that way, you probably feel like I did. I, I was in high school, an athlete. I played a lot of soccer. And so there were certain things that I just did. You know, I was serious about them, and we were able to, it was really fun. We actually won some division championships and everything. It was sweet. But there were a lot of things that I didn't do, and it wasn't because I couldn't do them, right? I could go to parties, but and I went to as many parties as I wanted to, but I didn't go to any that had alcohol because it could completely compromise me from being able to play my sport, right? And I went to bed on time, you know, and I had the right cleats and the right shorts, right? And I ate enough protein, you know, like every single thing that an athlete does, I was like, I'm doing that because I'm going to be one, right? All right, so we're, we'll just uh, accelerate there. Now, if you if you are in Christ, then you have a new identity as well. And you have an amazing identity as part of the royal priesthood, right? As a member of God's kingdom to live up to. So here are some things that followers of Jesus do that will actually draw you closer to God. You can spend time with God. That can be in prayer. That can be in worship. That can be in studying and reading or listening to scripture. If you have a phone at, you know, at home and, and you want to get, uh, get the Bible and listen to it, faith comes by hearing, there's an app on there. It's, it's easy to remember. It's bible.is. Right? That's it. <laughs> right? Just put that in the app store. Bible.is, and you can actually speed up the Bible, and you can listen to it super fast if you're like me. I'm like, I want to get through stuff and learn it, you know? And, and so you can floor it and just listen to that. But Bible.is is a really great app that you can get on your phone. It's free, and it just plays the Bible out loud, so you can listen to it. You can spend time with other Christians in healthy relationships, just like we're doing today. You can help to serve them, to be a friend to them, to understand them when they're in need. And that's a big part of this. You can also figure out what your gifts are. Because each one of you is given a gift from God. And it might not just be one. You might have multiple gifts. We'll help you with exploring some of those. But as you read the Bible, you'll understand that God's made you completely unique, just like a thumbprint. He's made you to do something. And that something can bless the lives of thousands and thousands of people. It doesn't matter how young you are or how old you are. You have something that God's planned for your life. And if you follow him or you listen to him, he's going to help you to do that. And it's going to change the lives of a lot of other people. So we're counting on you for that. And we're really excited to see it. Um, there are some other things that you can do. Disciplines like fasting and giving. Giving is a big one you can start right away. Just being less selfish, right? You know, giving giving a portion. If you mow the lawn, you make $10, a dollar goes to, the, goes to God. And you'll see things happen in your church because you're doing that. Right? That's just the, the start of tithing. And then you can share your story, just like I did today, right? I talked about my story, about my parents. You can tell people about what your story is. And you might think that, you know, parts of your story aren't very exciting, but they matter. And they matter to people that are listening to you. They want to hear your story. Okay. And then there's living against your selfish nature, which also counts. Uh, you know, it's, it's a big deal, you know, just trying to live in the fruits of the Spirit. There's this song, I'm probably going to sound like a total dork because I learned this song when I was like seven years old, So, but I'm just going to sing it because it helps me to see if I'm on track. You know, is my life doing these things, right? And this is the song of the fruits of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. For such there is no law. They make the song just from the Bible verse, so it's like, you know. Uh, that's a, you only get one of those. So, um, now, at the end at the end there, did you notice how it says, um, for such there is no law? Like, what does that mean, right? It means that you can't be wrong, and you won't be wrong if you're doing those things. You're doing the right things if you're acting in faithfulness, love, gentleness, self-control, peace, kindness, goodness, right? Those are the fruits that will come out of you because you've accepted the Holy Spirit. If you see that, then you're on track. So here's a quick recap of things that you can do that are practicing spiritual habits. You want to get and stay close to God. You want to spend time with God on your own through 
prayer, worship, and scripture. You want to spend time with others and help you grow and be in healthy relationships and conversations. You want to use your gift to give back to God and to serve others. And you want to share your story, no matter how imperfect or incomplete it might feel. Thank you so much for the time together today. If you're, if, uh, if, uh, if you're just getting started with welcome home, and if you're on board, we're looking forward to leveling up our relationship with God with you. So let's suit up with the full armor of God.